Time for a look at the news for this Good Friday. It is the second day of April for 2021. Well, as the first quarter of the year came to an end, California water officials report the snowpack in the Golden State is well below average, and the next few weeks are critical. Yesterday, the Department of Water Resources performed a manual reading at Phillips Station in the Lake Tahoe Basin. According to the Department of Water Resource, the water content of the Sierra Nevada snowpack measured 59% of the April 1st average, which is typically its peak. It measured a snow depth of 49.5 inches and a snow water content of 21 inches. That translates to 83% of average for the location. The state overall had only about 50% of average precipitation in the current water year. Now, this brings the second consecutive dry winter and indicates that the state is entering another drought only several years after a five-year dry spell. Now, the big question is how, how much of the current snowpack will end up in reservoirs that are currently half full? As the snowpack starts to melt, the big unknowns are how dry are the soils beneath the snowpack and how much of that water will be absorbed into those soils before running off into our rivers and streams. But on the bright side, the season's final snow survey reading is April 29th, and even with the Department of Water Resource characterizing the current year as critically dry, California is in a better position than during our last drought. Cal Fire reports ground crews stopped the spread of a wildland fire yesterday in the Sheep Ranch area. The flames broke out late in the noon hour on Armstrong Road off Hubbard Road north of Highway 4. Cal Fire reports the origin of the two-acre fire and escaped debris burn. Ground crews quickly laid a hose line around the fire, but they were having spot fire challenges and an additional water tender was called to the scene. Crews able to gain the upper hand on the fire just before 3. They remained on scene for a couple of hours with mop-up. And a set of mystery bones believed to be human remains have touched off an investigation in Calaveras County. According to reports on Monday, the Calaveras County Sheriff's Office Dispatch Center received a call from a person who stated they had located what they believed to be human remains in a remote area located north of San Andreas. The caller stated they were walking on a seldomly used portion of their property when they made that discovery. Patrol deputies and investigators responded to the location and confirmed the remains to be human. The scene was investigated and processed, and evidence at the scene indicated that the remains are not part of a historic Native Indian burial site. Identification of the subject along with the circumstances and manner of death are currently under investigation at this time. No further details have been released. Well, as of yesterday, April 1st, the state of California has made some changes related to property tax rules. Following the passage of Prop 19 by voters in November, the state's seniors, those severely disabled, and victims of wildfire can now transfer the taxable value of their original home to a replacement residence. It could result in a notably lower property tax bill for those eligible Now, the California Board of Equalization reports seniors age 55 and older or those severely disabled must meet specific requirements to qualify. The original and replacement residents must be eligible for the homeowner's or disabled veteran's exemption. An application must be filled with the county assessor to transfer the taxable value. And lastly, the replacement residents must be purchased or newly constructed within two years of the sale of the original home. Now, if the market value of the replacement residence greater than the market value of the original residence, the difference will be added to the taxable value at the time of transfer. Now, in addition, for victims of a wildfire or natural disaster, the same conditions and requirements apply, but there are no age requirements. The residence must be substantially damaged to qualify. The damage must be from wildfire or governor proclaimed disaster. Well, Caltrans is scheduled to begin clearing the winter snows from Ebbets Pass and Monitor Pass in an effort to get the seasonal routes open for the summer season. Work is scheduled to begin on Monday the 5th with crews operating from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekdays, weather permitting. Now, Caltrans' goal is to have all winter passes open no later than 
Friday before Memorial Day, which is uh, the weekend starts on Friday, May 21st. Caltrans manages three Trans Sierra Passes in the Central Sierra that are closed during winter and generally open in spring. Ebbets Pass Highway 4, Sonora Pass 108, and Monitor Pass Highway 89. Opening passes in the spring involves more than just removing snow, though. After the snow is removed, plug drains need to be cleared and down signs need to be replaced. Prior to opening the roadway for public use, the pavement is repaired, cracks are sealed, and the roadway is restriped. The foremost guiding principle in these procedures is to maintain public and worker safety. Remember, slow for the cone zone. And Amador Resource Conservation District hosting another community chipping day today and tomorrow. Remember, guys, these are free of charge to county residents. Landowners can bring their vegetation material cleared from their own property to the chipping days. A licensed contractor and industrial chipper will be on site. They'll chip it for you, make it very easy for you. Again, free of charge. First come, first serve this week's. Chipping days will be held at the Lockwood Fire Station in Volcano today and tomorrow, 8.30 to 4. And the El Dorado County Fair and Events Center is hosting a swap meet flea market tomorrow. Shoppers will find a wide variety of steals and deals ranging from antiques, new items, crafts, collectibles, and gently used items. The swap meet will be held from 9 to 1. Now, vendors will be set up in the plaza, which faces Placerville Drive. Admission and parking is free. The fairgrounds are located at 100 Placerville Drive in Placerville. For details, eldoradocountyfair.org. And that, my friends, is a look at local news on this gold country. Good Friday from the KVGC News Center. I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather, 24 hours a day to visit our website. That's kvgcradio.com.